nice to see you, sort of, I guess. Um, <laughs> I wish I could say I could see you. Um, today we are going to talk about chocolate. So this is just a quick little class about the health benefits of chocolate. Um, I chose this because Valentine's Day is coming, so I thought it would probably be nice for everyone to just have a couple of recipes um, to take away and some neat information about how uh, beneficial chocolate can actually be. So of course, we're not talking about um, milk chocolate. Obviously, it's about dark chocolate, cacao nibs, you know, pure cocoa, those types of things. So I'm going to share my screen with you. So one moment here, bear with me. Let's see. Here we go. All right, so here we are. We have our quick class, Got Chocolate. Of course, this um, class is not intended to diagnose, treat, or mitigate disease. Dietary supplements and foods can interact with prescription medications. If you're taking any prescription medications, um, become informed about the possible interactions. Talk to your doctor, or better yet, talk to your pharmacist, because it is their job to know these things. So we do have our five founding principles. We focus on nutrition education, which is me, and it's always free. Highest quality standards, nothing gets in this store without passing a very extensive screening process. We keep our prices very affordable in comparison to our competitors. Uh, we support our local communities. Uh, we used to do it um, in person. Now, of course, um, we are trying to uh, do this virtually and then great employees so they take very good care of us here um, and have definitely shown that during this time so why chocolate how many people love chocolate we all most people do i can't say we all do my mother-in-law did not like it uh, and i learned that the hard way i bought it for her and she said didn't you know i don't like chocolate so i never did that again um, human consumption took place 5,000 to 15,000 years ago. It was revered in Olmec, Mayan, and Aztec cultures and used as currency in Mexico until 1887. Uh, Milton Snavely Hershey opened his chocolate factory in 1888. By the early 1600s, the vogue for chocolate had swept across Europe. In London, chocolate houses began to rival coffee houses as social gathering spots. One shop opened on a Grace Church Street in 1657, advertising chocolate as a West Indian drink, which cures and preserves the body of many diseases. That's good to know. You can't say stuff like that anymore. Um, in France, Madame de Savine wrote about enormous chocolate consumption throughout the court at Versailles in 1671. Louis and Madame du Barry were said to use chocolate mixed with amber to stimulate their lovers. And you can actually find amber and chocolate uh, perfume if you look online. I did uh, look into that. So chocolate contains high levels of free radical scavengers called flavonoids, and these are plant pigments responsible for many of the health benefits given by fruits and medicinal plants. The phytonutrients in chocolate are similar to those found in green tea, apples, red wine, pomegranate juice, and berries. Not only is chocolate rich in these flavonoids, but factors within the chocolate increase the absorption of these compounds. So it's actually thought that the healthy gut bacteria is essential for converting polyphenols in chocolate into absorbable usable forms for the body. Uh, probiotics also help support a healthy gut bacteria so that this can take place. So when your gut flora is extremely healthy, you're going to get the most out of that, out of the flavonoids that are in that chocolate. Um, the antioxidant content of cocoa is two times greater than red wine two to three times greater than green tea and four to five times greater than black tea. And that is, of course, per serving. Um, chocolate is considered the third highest contributor of antioxidants in the American diet. The average American consumes around one gram of polyphenols a day. A single 80 to 85 gram dark chocolate bar can contain upwards of 1.5 grams of polyphenols. So keep that in mind. You can get a, quite a bit of your polyphenols from chocolate from the dark chocolate alone. So what can chocolate do for you? It supports cardiovascular health, can support positive mood, stimulate the release of appetite suppressive hormones. 
uh, the bioactive components of chocolate support cognitive function. Polyphenols in chocolate help the skin to age gracefully and protect the skin from UV rays. Health and happiness. It increases HDL cholesterol levels, so it increases the good stuff, protects LDL cholesterol from oxidation, promotes healthy endothelial function, supports healthy blood pressure, inflammation modulation. It also supports a positive mood. The biologically active components support the production of feel-good neurochemicals in the brain, such as dopamine and feel-good neurotransmitters in the periphery, such as endorphins. Other compounds in chocolate, such as methylxanthines, are powerful mood supportive compounds that act as mild stimulants. Um, it is milder than caffeine. So you do want to know that you're choosing your chocolate correctly. So obviously not all chocolate is created equal. Quality matters. The health benefits come from the cacao bean. Choose dark chocolate with at least a 70 or greater percentage of cocoa. Added milk and sugar reduces its health benefits. So remember that not all chocolate is created equal. You get Hershey's Kisses, you're not getting that um, cacao benefit. Eliminate products containing artificial sugars, artificial flavors, and highly processed vegetable oils. Obviously, when we say artificial sugars, we're talking about aspartame or Splenda. We're not talking about stevia or monk fruit. And some products contain very little or no cacao. Does anybody remember Sixlets? I'm pretty sure Sixlets, Sixlets weren't even chocolate at all. Like they have a very weird taste, very weird texture. Um, I never believed that they were real chocolate. In fact, my mom always called them fake chocolate. So know your chocolate. Besides looking at the ingredient and nutrition facts for processing information, it's important to know how the chocolate was grown and harvested. Chocolate itself is usually made from more processed cacao, meaning if you really want to harness the best from the chocolate, you should try the least processed form of cacao, which is the cacao nibs. Um, I personally think those are very bitter, and I'm a chocolate fan in terms of when I want chocolate, I want something sweet. I don't want something bitter, but some people love the cacao nibs in yogurt and hot cereal, so I've heard all sorts of interesting ways that Cacao nibs are used um, and people are very happy with them. They are very good for you. So throw them in a smoothie. If you don't like the taste, it'll just add to the health benefit of your smoothie or your hot cereal and make it better for you. So labels matter. You'll notice in our store, a lot of these labels are on our chocolate, especially we have our Rainforest Alliance and our Fair, Fair Trade certification. We're gonna talk about what that means. Um, for a food that brings us happiness, the practice of growing chocolate can be quite dark. Some growers use practices that clear the rainforest and incorporate a large amount of pesticides and herbicides, which you know we are against because that's very bad for your body. Organic is an important seal to look for. Additionally, there's a huge human dignity component. So unregulated practices utilize child labor. Um, forced slave labor, discrimination, and dangerous conditions. So when you see the fair trade seal, you're seeing that it sets social standards and environmental standards. It's protecting the people, the chocolate, everything from these things happening. Um, protects prices paid to farmers, prohibits child labor and forced labor, prohibits discrimination, and protects the rights and wages of the workers. So there's no slave labor going on, no um, sweatshops, nothing of that when you see that fair trade symbol. Um, Rainforest Alliance keeps forests standing, curbs climate change, protects wildlife, alleviates poverty, and transforms business practices. So these are very, very important seals to have, and of course, organic and um, non-GMO. Remember, when it says organic, it's always non-GMO. So some add-in ideas of cacao is to mix the cacao powder in a protein smoothie, um, add cocoa nibs to your trail mix, nut butters or yogurt, try a Mexican mole negro, and add unsweetened cocoa powder to red chili. So there's a few ways that you can incorporate cacao to make your recipes um, more flavorful and uh, to eat with more intention, right, in the health field. So a small amount of dark chocolate or cocoa daily really does have a place in the healthy diet. 
Mental and physical benefits. Researchers have found chocolate can aid in memory, attention, problem solving, and alertness. These benefits have more to do with the stimulant, stimulants the food contains, uh, the theobromine, uh, phen phenethylalanine, and caffeine than its flavonoid content. So it's actually the stimulant that gives you these benefits. Um, just for comparison's sake, a one ounce piece of dark chocolate contains approximately 20 milligrams of caffeine compared to an eight ounce cup of coffee that can average between 60 to 120, depending on where you get it. So there isn't much caffeine, but it's enough to give someone a lift. So someone who isn't um, reliant on coffee on a regular basis may actually feel the stimulant from chocolate more than someone who is even a one a day coffee drinker. It's not gonna be as, um, as noticeable. The nutrients in cocoa have been found to reduce one's cardiovascular disease risk by limiting LDL cholesterol oxidation decreasing inflammation, lowering blood pressure, and relaxing blood vessels. One study conju conducted at John Hopkins University of Medicine accidentally found cocoa's antiplatelet clumping effect is similar to taking aspirin. So the researchers went as far as saying a few squares of chocolate a day can reduce the risk of a heart attack by almost 50% in some cases. Now remember, that's a quote from a study. I'm not making that claim. So here's a little recipe, uh, zoccolati, which is Aztec chocolate. You have a cup of water, one to two pinches of chili powder or cayenne, one tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You combine everything in a blender um, until it's frothy and enjoy cold like the Aztecs or warm gently in a small saucepan. So you can drink it like hot chocolate or you can drink it cold. Um, if the drink is too bitter, add sweetener like stevia or honey. I would suggest stevia, honey will raise blood sugar. So of course, if you come in here, we do have a cute little book nook. Um, we can't get, we can't give these books away. We've put, um, put a lot of them on sale. They're not moving. I guess people just know they have the internet now, but some people really like the look and the feel and, and having, coming in contact with that book. So if you want to look for any of these books here or any book, uh, please come give us a, you know, a look-see and see what you can find. Um, we do have a couple of articles, chocolate and cocoa nibs, so if you want that information, feel free to come in. Uh, you can also email me or email Desiree and she can make that request for you. Um, books, quick and easy paleo comfort foods, paleo indulgences, practical paleo, paleo comfort foods. These all have healthy ways to make basically anything, but there will be chocolate recipes in there as well. So I would ask if there are any questions. Obviously, you can't ask me. So do feel free to send any of your questions, concerns, or otherwise to Desiree. And I know that she will shoot them over to me. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed this quick little class about chocolate. I hope everyone's enjoying January and that you have a lovely February Valentine's Day. And um, we will have another presentation next month. You guys have a great month. I'll talk to you later. Bye.